Ahoy, traveler! Come, come, I won't bite. Hardly a way to meet a friend at sea, don't you think? Now what's a young skipper like you traveling in these waters? Oh, hoping to cast up the old ventures of your eh? Well, you aren't the first sailor to hunger after the days of pirates. Pirates, after all, were the best of us all. Not morally speaking, of course, they were scoundrels, but the stories. Oh, the stories! They were the stuff of pantheons and pots. Calico Jack, Captain Morgan, Edward Teach. Now that's an interesting chapter. But perhaps the grandest of the detestables was Captain Elizabeth Anne of the Glowing Skull. Don't you recall it? Oh, shame. Now there was a fearsome legend indeed. Elizabeth Anne and her trusted crew of miscreants. Perhaps you'd fancy a tale. What'll it be? Swashbuckling, thievery, heroism? Or perhaps you'd like a darker story? Aye, that's what you need. See, before the treasure and the battles, there was but a single tale. A story of how Captain Anne came to be. One of the battles she encountered, and the demon she faced below the black tide. Cast your mind back a ways, way back until you see a setting sun in blue waves. Look even closer and you'll see a ship on those currents, the glowing skull. Great banners of pride and adventure billowing in the breeze as it ventures on, and within her wooden sides carries the beginning of our tale. We are two days out from Tortuga and you're telling me we're already out of limes. What the blast are we already out of limes? It ain't the crew's fault. Can't blame the gulls, Remus. Birds don't eat limes. Rumour has it that it's the cabin boy. Greg, he's as thin as a bone. What's he doing with him? Oh, eat some rinds and all. Greg would eat the barnacles off the bow if he could. Give it a couple of days, Captain. I'll be next in line if it means a full belly. Well, maybe with an empty stomach you might get your duties done. Oh, please. This ship would go under if it weren't for me. You, on the other hand, Captain, are what we call superfloss. Come again! Superfloss, you know. Superfloss, when you're more than what is needed. That's super flouse, Remus. And this ship isn't going anywhere without me aboard, so you can kiss me. <laughs> my... Can't we have three moments of a pleasant conversation without you telling me to kiss someone's posterior assorts? You know, you're right. You do that enough on your own time. <laughs> Bloody well good at it, too. Now, may we shake things up a bit and do our actual job? Fine. Besides the limes, how are we looking for the next few days? Meat and rum is scrappy as always. It will live. By the time we make part, we'll be scraping the barrels for horses. The crew will hold till then. What's our heading? 38 degrees northeast, if you please, Mr. Remus. Ah, to the land of the O'Reilly and the green clovers, I see. Aye, now get to it. Aye, Captain. Full sail for Glasgow. Clue Bay, actually. Clue Bay? Aye. Are you sure? Port McGee is a hair shorter distance if you're desperate for port. I need to make a stop at Clue Bay, Remus. That is where we're sailing to. <sighs> Elizabeth? What? Clue Bay is good for two things. Infamous pirate markets for dubious trading and fresh salmon. And I know for a fact that you hate salmon. What of it? We made one shipment to Tortuga, and that was it. You swore we were out of the pirating scheme, and I'm not going there for the market. What then? Well, they have some Dublin cedar that can be used to rebuild bits of the ship from the last raid. They have wonderful bread there. I'm quite sure the men would enjoy that. And the salmon's not that bad. Anne, I've been your mate for the better part of three years. I've surmised it in that time that you're a god-awful liar. What exactly do I have to be lying about? We promised each other that after the rum, we would shoot straight. If you're dealing in the dark, Anne, it'll be a steep slope before you end up on those posters along with all those... Those what, Remus? Finish your thought. Pirates! Is that what we've surmounted ourselves to? You think I'm going to end up on a poster like one of those dirty lion thieves? I thought you knew me better than that, Remus. Oh, don't you start that again. First you said Singapore would have been the last time, then Port Royal, and now it's Tortuga! Where does it end with you, Anne? When is it enough? It'll be enough when we aren't just surviving. What's the point of living if it's like this, Anne? But as these two friends feuded, so did the seas and the sky. Rain began to patter against the captain's shutters and thunder billowed like a wall drop. 
with eyes as stern and blue as those troubled waters outside, and her best and perhaps only friend. And just tell get me. Get out! Batten down the hatches and get out! That's an order. I, I, Captain. The young man exited the cabin, leaving the captain to her, albeit mysterious devices. Her steamy eyes darted round the cabin. They fell to totems and maps, then finally to a lone, heavy box on her desk. Her heart tempted the idea of stopping, but did not concede. Considering opening the trunk, she stepped closer, but before she could ponder a moment longer on it, Poseidon enacted his might and crashed the titan of all waves against the side of the glowing skull, thrown to the floor and feared the worst. To her demise, her worries were proved right. Wave after wave conjured from that storm, each pummeling the already sinking ship deeper and deeper into the watery maw of the Atlantic. And just before the last wave hit, through the sound of thunder and whistling wind, her whole craft, a single horrific tune before she was pulled down, and all she saw was black. It was something between a moment and a lifetime before Anne awoke, and when she did, she saw that the world she held so dear had become something from a nightmare. Her once peaceful, sun-filled windows now reflected the sycophantic lights of the waves far above her. Her room creaked and moaned as she looked about the cavernous prison, as salty drifts began to grace themselves from her ceiling and onto her forehead, she began to realize where she had found herself, lost and hidden, trapped on the ocean floor in the wreckage that was once named the Glowing Skull. Whereas some of the heroes of the past would take it upon themselves to overcome this adversity, Anne was not yet one of these legends. She was only a wayward captain now, alone and scared at the bottom of the sea. I. I wish I could say she had braved the worst, but in those treacherous shadows she fell onto her knees. Only the feats and flounders could know what ran through her mind then. What mountains of panic, what thoughts burned her as she had never noticed the lighting of a match in the corner, or the heavy breathing of another. Unaware of those strange eyes on her, she realized words easing their way through her mouth, and in some semblance of claiming peace, she gave those familiar words voice. across the cabin and quickly introduced the darkness to her pistol, firing into the abysmal blackness, and as if to retort a chuckle emerged back at her. Her eyes strained against the limited light and began to make out a figure shifting just beyond her sight. Devoid of reasoning and sense, she had only assumptions. She assumed it was a larger man, cloaked in dark, woolly clothes. She assumed a frizzy beard resting upon his hypothetical chest, right above the not-so-hypothetical bullet hole. The only thing she was sure of was a horrible, many-tooth smile. And to Anne, this was enough reason to pull out a second pistol and point it at the man. Amused by this, the staggering figure plopped into her chair and rested his muddy boots upon her table. With a pipe in his wide mouth, he sized her up, locking eyes with her weapon. Nothing worked so well to me for the first time, did it? Who are you? Just an old man nursing his pipe. And it's all the same to you, lass. Unfortunately for her new acquaintance, it was not all the same to her. She fired her second shot into the man. But, unfortunately for Anne, he paid no mind. A trail of silver smoke wisped its way out of his belly and mixed with the plumage of his pipe. What gung-ho with the rounds, aren't we? 
Hospitality is lost on the young and beautiful. Out of fruitless pistols, Anne unsheathed her sword, an act ordained by few, and pointed it at the stranger, shaking all the while. A girly, again here to have something resembling pleasant conversation. I tend to find that it usually starts when the cutlasses have been removed from the equation. Now, if you would mind, put that thing away, or you take an eye out. With a cock of his eyebrow, Anne was tempted to lower the blade, but fell upon better judgment. She stepped closer, hoping to compensate for what bravery she didn't have. I think I'll keep it handy, give him a slight lack of trust. I'll ask again, who are you? A uh, connoisseur of Gaelic harmonics. Ambassador of the naughty nautical limerick. Uh, perhaps the leash hair of the Western European Tobacco Society. You don't sound too sure. No. Perhaps I'm not. Perhaps I'm too many things to count. Perhaps I'm something else entirely. Or perhaps I'm nothing at all. Wouldn't that be something? Just you and I being nothing together. But who can tell these days? Oh, God. You're the Grim Reaper, aren't you? Oh, that's quite the reach for someone with such short arms. Where'd you come up with that? Look out my window. My ship is sinking. Yeah, sinking, it? sunk, and sunk. We're nesting quite comfortably at 40 leagues below the black tide. Then who else could you be? Why else would you be here other than to collect the souls of me and my crew? Do I look like a skeleton in a cape? I've still got some meat on these bones yet. Then who the hell are you? I, me bonny lass, am the incomparable, the unfathomable, the one and only Davy Jones. I'm serious. As am I. Nate, Davy Jones is a yarn spun by drunkards who don't know their foot in a sea. Surely you'll give me a bit more credit than that. Right. The silver point of her cutlass finds its way into Jones's throat as she begins to find her footing. Her words hissed out of her mouth and fell harshly upon his ears who smiled all the while. Jones is a putrid, vile excuse of a ghost who teases superstitious drunks. I suppose, if one were to butcher the story... Then what, pray tell, are you, Davy Jones? Well, I've heard it told many a way, but this be the best. Instead, there be three natural ways to die. First, if you die at home, around your friends and family. You'll rise and ascend to the place of green pastures, and you'll dance forever. Then, if you die lost, or gone, away from all that is familiar, the trees acclaim you, and you'll be reborn again as white rabbit. But, if you die at sea, you sink. You drop below the black tide deeper and deeper until you meet, well, me. Desert. Come again? Leave. Out. Jones is a cursed name regardless of its truth. As if you're so pleasant. There may be a time for white rabbits and bloody pastures, but that is not today. Leave while I still let you. Wow. Davy Ooh, Jones still. threw his head back and released something that could be related to a laugh. It bellowed deep from within him and came out into a cackling, guffawing mess that painted the ears of our dear captain. And, for a moment... She could have sworn he had almost too many teeth. You're just a card, aren't you, Gary? It's Captain Elizabeth Ann to you, Trout. Well then, I suppose I'll be on my way. Jones stood and sauntered his way to the door. Such a shame, since I'm the only thing keeping the cabin from flooding and sending the glorious Captain Elizabeth Ann to a watery grave. But let it never be said that Davy Jones overstays his welcome. So long, keep the change and kiss the reaper for No, me. wait! Are you sure? Would hate to be a bother. You can stay. Just don't open that door, please. You know, I think you're only being nice to me because I'm not drowning you. No, I... I want you to stay. That's in company, I go. Well, if you insist. As of turning on a dime, Jones plopped back down into her seat and bit upon his pipe again his grayed eyes scanning her. Anne faltered in place, feeling exposed. As long as we're making pleasant niceties to one another, what shall the subject of our conversation be? Politics? Religion? 
13th century French eroticism. Sea slugs. What are you doing here? Well, it tends to be a horse and carriage situation, love. Ship sinks. I tend to follow. Here, just a little treat along the way. What is your impetus, Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones? It's your name, isn't it? Aye, oh, if I were a pansy with a powdered wig and a puddle on me lap. Davy, then. Better. Davy Jones? Best. Bit time consuming, isn't it? It's three syllables. Are you always this stubborn? Only when I'm having fun. This is fun for you, then. Oh, watching lovelies like you floundering while you come to grips. Is the sweet end to a very long night for me. Come to grips with what exactly? Oh, come now, Anne. What? Well, David Jones hardly has any business dealing with the living, does he? I'm dead? No, not yet at least. How long do I have? Moments, hours, seconds. Hard to say, to be honest. All matters of sense and rationale are lost down here. You make them more precious. Is that what you mean? Enjoy what time you have, for you won't have another like it. Do you find it easy serving that hogwash you call catharsis, Davy Jones? I'm here to acclimate love, not to comfort. If you want to go screaming into the bleeding nothingness out there, be me guest. But should you want a hint of civility... Civility? Civility? Here we go. You're telling me I'm dying on the ocean floor and you propose civility? If you really are the Davy Jones you say you are... Get my ship out of here. No! You're at the belly of the ocean, princess. Nothing here to save you. I can't save you. You can't save you. Your dear little friend Remus can't save you. So take a moment and compose your... How do you know Remus? Where is he? Where is my crew? If you want an honest answer. That is your only option. There not be much of a crew left, to be frank. All that remains, as far as I can see, is a scared little captain singing whaler tunes. There are very few moments in a lass's life that will break her heart. This, unfortunately, would not be one of them. Upon hearing the fate of her crew, her only family, her life, her heart did not break. No. It shattered. The once brave captain loses her sword and breath, both unaware to her. He was just here. Remus was just here. And what a little ditty it was. Quite the earworm. I listened to, into that storm. Soon may the wellermen come to bring a sugar and tea, Emperor. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go. And swiped up her blade and pushes it to Joan's throat, praying for it to break his skin. With tears as salty as the world around her, the fire within her almost illuminated the room. Why him? Why would you take him and not me? Soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea. All the blasted ships in the sea, why did you choose mine? Why? One day when the target is done, we'll take our leave and go. Damn you! Damn you to hell! Been there, love. Much preferred here with you. Leave me dead, man! Oh, please. The ship would go under if it weren't for me. You, on the other hand, Captain, are what we call supple flaws. Loosening her grip upon her assumed prisoner, she lost all sense of sense. For a brief and horrible moment, she knew not of loss or pain. She knew not of sadness or anger. She knew something much deeper than that. Perhaps something that we will never know, nor should we ever. Some primordial, anarchistic emotion that could only be defined by a single, lasting, world-shattering scream. A scream that fell upon the deaf and uncaring ears of the sea, forgotten and lost to all, all except for a single dark figure before her. You see it now, Anne. You see where the tides have left us. There be nobody to hear your screams. Nobody but a dead man. As if to ordain their shared misery, the world rumbles around them. The churning, strange sound of a leviathan's growl permeates the cabin and shakes Anne's soul. But for the first time since she fell beneath the tide, she found solace and familiarity. Listen. Can you hear her? That's a mother who's just lost her calf. Listen. Listen to her sing her song. She's mourning. 
can you hear her pain? It feels like a needle slowly making its way to your heart. My father always taught me to respect the monsters of the blue. Of the deep blue. For the longest time he would come, once every couple of years, for a short while before he returned to the horizon. He would teach me these wonderful things about the sea. Her mysteries. Her beauties. Her dangers. He taught me to love and respect the ocean unconditionally. I cherished the memories I have of him. And then I learned what he was. A hypocrite. A liar. A bastard father and husband. He slaughtered these beasts for sport. After all he taught me, he betrayed his own teachings. I hate him. Resent him. And yet I can't stop thinking of him. All I hear are his whispers telling me what they're saying. I want nothing more than to feel his touch one last time. For him and I to walk along the shore just one last time. A whaler. Should have guessed by the tomb. The worst fathers make the best whalermen. Something to do with the lack of dignity, I think. Oil and blubber does worse to a man's blood than gold or whiskey. Or even the starry-eyed look of his daughter. But killing a whale, killing something that pure, makes a man cursed. There are no such things as curses. Isn't there? Tell me. Did Daddy Dearest have a fortunate ending? No, damn well he didn't. Cursed men find cursed fates. That's the way it's always been. Your daddy was no different. There were a hundred men just like him who stayed up late at night, butchering those behemoths. The blood and the water and their knives to their tongue. I said he was proud of it. I bet he was. You people curse yourselves with their oil and hide and tea, thinking it's your God-given right. But slaying a whale is a sacrilegious thing. There's no honor in it. No justice for them. No, oh, have no fear. It'll come for them. Even if it takes a lifetime. No, they'll be gone in time too. But that tide, those waves, you cross them and that'll be the end for you. They'll hold you close and keep you for all your eternity. And only a moment of theirs. You'll belong here forever. Just like me. <laughs> Please. I'm not cursed. Really now? Tell me, when you were plunging below the surface, racing towards judgment, were you feeling an overwhelming sense of reassurance? Not a hint that you were destined for, well, hotter places. I uh, suppose you'd be right, but some of us have been a little creative with our endeavors. And who is to judge us in the end? God? If you believe in such. Do you? Should I? Why wouldn't you? Oh, I have different alliances. The devil? Not so Abrahamic. Who then? Myself, of course. Then you are to judge me. No, you are to judge you. Who better to claim your fate than yourself? Then why are you here? Oh, I'm here to act when you face the inevitable. At the end? Oh, take a moment and think about it. I've always thought I was more than a whaler's daughter or a first mate. Sailing grand adventures and helping the common man, simple enough. If I was to die at sea, then I'd do it with honour and be bloody remembered. But when that first wave hit, I didn't feel any honour in that. I felt like I was sinking, more so than a ship. I was falling, dissolving. Forgotten. I forgotten. But good folk don't get forgotten, I thought. The good don't die here like this. The good mustn't confess their fears to the dead. All can confess their fears to the dead. For the dead will always listen. 
in a word. Do you listen to all good men? With some allowances, I do. Then did you speak to my father when he... The whaler! I'm glad to say I never saw the man. And did you see... I mean, did you ever... Spit it out, lass. Remus! Ah, the Welsh chap. Did you speak to him? A few words. What did he say? Alas, dead men tell no tales. Was it peaceful? Did you want it to be? Of course I do. Why? Because he deserved to die peacefully. But he still deserved to die, you mean? No! Well, well why I... not wish a peaceful death for yourself, then? Because I don't need one. Really, now? I like, meant I... Don't need a peaceful death now. No, I think you meant something else by that. Like what? I'm not sure, but it reminds me of the tale of Long Neck McCallerville. McCoolo? Ah, Captain Yelicious Long Neck McCallerville, commander of the Swaddled Peacock. Good commander, strong crew. That was until, say, a few years ago. Skimming off his crew's wages, I heard. Or slept with the first mate's daughter. I can't really remember, but that doesn't matter. When his loyal crew heard of McCarvel's misdeeds, they pulled him out of bed, took him to the top deck, tied a rope around his neck, pushed him overboard, and gave him the wonderful nickname, Long Neck. Why are you telling me this? Because McCarvel, for all of his flaws, had a very interesting notion for his last word. See, despite his ambiguous morals, he claimed it all to be for naught. He cursed his crew, spat at them, pleaded them to accept his guiltlessness. As he plunged to his doom, he cried, May the innocent have a speedy death, and the guilty live forever, miserably. Unfortunately, they lost the rope before we could retrieve them, so we never got to find out which one he turned out to be. Are you saying I'm guilty of something? I'm saying you seem quite comfortable with the notion of Remus's demise. You bastard! Oh, we didn't nerve, did we? I was a good captain. Am a good captain. Remus was a decent man. I will not let your hopes of discord turn my grievance into some Machiavellian scheme. That's all you had to say, lass. Just say loud and clear that you are as pure as sea foam. I have nothing to be... Jones being the right bastard he was tips over that familiar chest from before. And to all of our surprise, outpours riches, coins and jewels and pearls beyond measure clatter and cling to the floor. Sheepishly, her eyes glisten as the misplaced gold glows. Sorry to interrupt. Please continue on how you've done nothing wrong. That's, I'm not that. Lads, I'm Davy Bloody Jones. I can smell the tarnish of a rusty coin at the bottom of a trench. This little hoard has been an itch just waiting to be scratched since the moment I came here. That's private. That's roughly several thousand in doubloon and other assorted treasures. And what are they such riches for a shipping vessel. Your crew be starving, and you're hiding away in this tiny little sum. For what? A bungalow in the mountains. There's something wrong with being fiscally irresponsible. Ah! Oh, girly, I have a notion to think this isn't yours. Why is that? Your eyes turn to saucers when I open this. Now, there be nothing wrong with sailing with a bit of gold across the pond. But why would any self-respecting individual trust their monies with a half rate spineless Captain S and her incompetent crew. Incompetent! Uh, you only do that if you don't want nobody to see these wonders, making them somewhat dubious in nature. Am I getting warmer? Damn you. Yeah, uh, burning hot. Imagine that. The oh so innocent Elizabeth Hall is a pirate runner. Pirate! You offered quite a modest sum to the trade as well. More gems, gold, and pearls than any whaler's daughter could ever imagine. Rife with blood money, are we? It's a bloody trunk of gold. What of it? Bloody gold, and... What is this? Jones's deathly white hand finds its way through the precious coins and iridescent objects to remove a large, inhumanly beautiful raw ruby. Almost in respect to the gem, all other light in the cabin seemed to dim as the reds of the crystal became only deeper and deeper. And in the eyes of the ghastly man, Anne could have sworn she saw fire. Put that back. Well, look at that. I was wrong. Say it again. Weren't the waves that pulled you down? Twere this stone here. What do you mean? Blood, Ruby. There be names for these rocks. 
old ones. Titan eyes, god teeth, hell crowns. They're so precious, so wonderful, so mighty that the weight of all man's greed makes them heavier than sin. That will pull you down, love. Those bastards sent you over with a cursed gem. They curse me. Why? I thought you didn't believe in curses. They gave me ten months' wages for a one month shipment. It was easy money. It was a si- it was simple money. My men needed that. They could sense it. That's why they pawned it off on you so easy. Lowest bidder to the highest prize. It was an easy job. Freemus would have never known any better. Wouldn't know what you're saying, you mean. So, is it a sin to provide for my men? For their families? Is it a sin to do the wrong thing for the right people? You took this stone for one reason and one reason alone. Just like every other bugger who touched this rock in the past. Just like Long Neck McCarville. You can't stop yourself from wanting something important. You can't help but to wonder what the richness would feel like in your bones. You can't help but to follow the fate of a pirate. I am not- You have been a pirate since the day your father sliced that whale and taught you to hear a cry. Pirates are the same as whalers, but in one respect. Instead of butchering whales, you would skin the entire world if it meant you would be satiated by a real treasure. No, I... No, but you savages cannot comprehend what real treasure is. So you pillage the earth for her children. Gold, silver trees, rubies. Then you gorge on it until you choke and go for more. You are slobs for everything and anything until you find the one thing that makes it all matter. The one damn treasure that you've wanted your entire life. But we're too pure to understand. How the hell would you know what I've wanted? Because I am the same sinner as you, Anne. Just older and rotting. I've tasted the black tide for 300 years. And for 300 years, it has told me what true wealth is. Is that being? It is life. To not be forgotten, Anne. To never become another corpse at the bottom of the sea and to bloody be somebody. When you figure that out, You would sink a hundred glowing skulls to survive, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't. A titan eye. That was your price for Remus. I just wanted to survive. Now, why survive like this? So I can live! More than this scrounging. This feeding and gnawing at scraps. Wanting something more, always wanting. I've starved in the dark for years, hoping for a day where I wouldn't fight for my next breath. If that dream is filled with rubies and rum, so be it. I will drown every damned ship I cross if it means I for once can be something more than a whaler's daughter. I will one day hear a whale cry and I won't mistake it for my own. I will be more than they've ever seen, by God. I will be Elizabeth Anne, not girly, not lass, not love, but captain. And Remus may rest in those green pastures if he likes, but I will not die here. The tide will have to wait another day for me, Jones, because I am not done here. Unaware of what her words meant, she stands by them. But as her courage and desperation grew, as did the smile of Jones, his footsteps growing heavier as he grew close. Do you mean it, Anne? Truly? Every word. And if there be a path to that horizon, would you take it? Without hesitation. Even if it weighed more than rubies? More than blubber. More than the tides. Where are you getting at? I be an old sailor, Anne. I've traversed my way around the waves and shores for quite some time. Now this be a desperate scene, but there be a way out. One way. I thought you were the harbinger of death. Ah, death and I are but fate-ridden lovers. Always to admire from afar. 
never to embrace. Though the black tide cannot be controlled, it may be persuaded. We can leave this place. No, I don't think I'll ever leave this place, Anne. But I can ensure your survival, love. Do as I say, and you'll see your horizons once more. Anything. What do I need to do to pledge my allegiance? I have gold. You can have the stone. No, I have no care for your bloody mortal spoils. All that matters in times like these are matters of debts. A check and balance of sorts. Sort of debt. The tide is stubborn. She'll never forfeit her prize if she claims it once. But she may allow you to replace your soul with something more enticing. Like what? Any price I'll pay. Whale's blood filled these waters years ago, Anne. Perhaps if something of the like spilled once again. Nay, she yearns for men's hearts. Find her that, and you and your crew will be free. Crew? Aye. I have a sneaking suspicion you've not seen the last of these tides. But fulfill your debt, Anne, and you'll never sail as a goldmonger again. Then what will that be? Anything you set your devilish little heart to. Appease my waters. You'll sail galleons higher than the gods themselves. You'll command fleets of worthy sailors bent upon your every word. They'll praise the name Elizabeth Anne, the Pirate Queen. Pirate Queen, you say? Your belly will never feel hunger again. A wide, heavy crown will rest on your head as you look to all your eye surveys. There won't be a Byzantine establishment that'll be able to hold a candle to your stature. The Olympians themselves will bow to us as you take their throne. And all I need to do is pay a debt. Just a bit of red love, spilled even quicker than it was created. And it'll be over. I'll finally have it all. Such an easy thing. To achieve what you've always wanted. And you do want this, don't you? Of course. Then how could there be any doubt? Why not take the deal with me? What? Stuck down here all these years. You can sail with me, Jones. That, that not be what I the... can hear it in your voice. Just like the whales. You're mourning. I, I haven't anything to mourn. I don't think that's quite true. Are you to take the deal or not? Don't you want to return to something before all of this? Before? You do recall something before, of course. Take the deal, Mass. Or don't you? Take it! Were you ever even human? Jones grabs Anne by the throat and pulls her in close, his knuckles wider than death and his grip firm. Anne could feel his heartless chest shake as he curdled with rage. The grey in his eyes, now a deeper color. Not silver nor smoke, but ash. Plaguing, desolate ash that seemed to radiate from him and into her soul. His grip tightened as he spoke, silently revealing epitaphs of horrors to her. You know not of what dangers you speak of, girl. Do you even know? I know the tide. I know the feeling of every wave every grit of sand. I know the hidden names of the seas, the ones that cannot be said anymore. Stay here long enough, and you'll learn them too. I have no patience for your little trifles of humanity. I endure it here, for that is all I can abide. You, on the other hand, still have a bit of clover. Take the deal, for she won't give another. But perhaps you desire your eyes to be as gray as mine. To stay, we'll play pinochle and smoke tobacco till the sun sets on us both. The blood will be yours and yours alone. And you'll endure this place too. But perhaps tide is less insufferable with someone, perhaps with 
eyes as green as yours. I won't notice the black anymore. Anne stepped away from the man, solemn in her decision. A glimmer of sadness washed over his face, quickly replaced by his familiar smug grin. Perhaps another time, then. Jones makes his way to the door and opens it, revealing not an imploding crash of waves, but rather a dark, haunting void beyond the reaches of her cabin. As she approached, she noticed the lack of anything. No noise, no sight, nothing. All that she experienced before she embarked was the quiet murmurings of Jones beside her. Remember, Anne, the tide'll claim her blood, but you must decide who will pay her price. Her price? Or yours? I guess we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? I'll wait here, just in case you change your mind. With a final choice and bravery matched only by Orpheus and Jonah, Anne entered the nothingness, forced into her path of destiny. Once she was gone, the cabin became all the duller, stale with nothing but the smell of corpses and tobacco. Jones walked from the door and sat at the desk once more, humming an almost familiar tune to himself. As he sits, his eyes fall upon the titan eye once more. A horrid smile crawled across his face as he got a truly awful idea. However, far from the burdens of the glowing skull, a weary Captain S washes on shore a small tropical island coughing and spraying the water in her lungs. She almost cannot comprehend the sense of sunlight once more. She rolls over onto her back and takes a moment to breathe and take in everything that had just occurred. She begins to laugh as she feels the waves of relief wash over her. But her happiness is short-lived when she hears distant and offshore. Captain! Captain! Remus? Anne stands, fearing to allow her heart to experience that terrible thing, hope. Remus stomps out of the shore and collides into Anne, sharing in one-sided embrace. Anne shakes her head, not understanding why she can smell limes and feel his stubble once more. He pulls away, still coughing up a lungs with water. Bloody good sight for sore eyes. A mummy, Captain. Me lungs are blazing. You'd think, after all these months, I would have learned. But it weren't till the first wave came that I realized, hey, I can't swim. Did you <laughs> Sugar crates, loads of them together kept me afloat. If it weren't for me bloody sweet tooth, I... So you never drowned? I never. Anne, I'd like to see your bloody definition of drowning if I can still shoot the gab after doing it. What do you remember? A wave. Then we came ashore. It seemed to happen all in seconds. That's odd. What's that? It felt longer. Oh, haven't you fear, Captain? We've escaped Davy Jones' locker yet. So it's over. It's really over. Aye. We'll be back on our trade route before you can say misfortune. And if we didn't? Oh, what are you going off about now? What if we had a wider horizon ahead of us? Anne, you just lost a ship. I know your soul's feeling quite a bit emphatic right now, but bear through it a moment. We've got measures to clear. Measures? Aye. We have investors and companies to notify. It's a misfortune indeed, but we all need to pay it in the end. All sin comes with a debt. Uh, what's that? Out of view of Remus, Anne notices something wash upon the shore. She slowly picks it up, already knowing what it is. 
Her fingers ran over its cursed red edges and craggly sides as her mind decides what must already be done. Just remembering something. Feeling all right, Anne? If one remembers a dream of a better place, even a dream of a dream, would that not be better than pretending it was never dreamt at all? <laughs> You've been baking for too long. Hide under the palms for a moment and calm down. You asked me something before we went down. Do you remember what you said? Not quite. What's the point of living if it's like this? What'd be the point of a wasted life if it's spared by a bit of red? A bit of blubber in the tide. The tide will claim your blood. But you must decide who will pay the price. Anne? What's that you got in your hand? A goodbye. Anne? A goodbye to a whaler's daughter. This was the last thing good Remus felt before Anne plunged the titan eye down upon him, fulfilling the prophecy of Cain and Abel as the shores ran red and tan. Anne dropped the once precious rock and forgot it. Once and for all, her eyes stare out to the black tide, hoping to find confirmation of her sin. But all that fell upon her wanting ears was the sound of crashing shores and guffawing winds. There. There, it's done! It's done and my hands are clean of it. As clean as a pirate's hands must be. Where be my horizon, Jones? Jones? Anne did not hear another thing that day, nor the day after it. Her pleading fell once more upon the unlistening ears of the eternal deepness and mocked even more by a crimson sunset. As the titan eye sank deeper and deeper into the once pure sands of the beach, Anne hoped that she'd heard whistling, never have been sure. See me, boy, tis not a tale of skullduggery and pride. This is a tale made long ago. From whale bones and ruby blood, Anne found herself to be part of something worse than a whaler's daughter. With graying eyes, she saw herself fall into a ghost story, only to be told again and again for as long as the tide will last. And that, me lad, is all but a momentary eternity, felt only by the waves and whales. Mm -hmm.